so back again um i'm here again actually in my mother's house in uh, my home village of monavay here again and just looking out there it's actually late at night here now it's actually nearly uh it's half 10 10 30 as i say and these lights are on in the village here um so we finished up again here at um to do the aunt thinks your kid oh no mother dying come home father this is the telegram that Stephen Dallas received um, from his father while he was in Paris, I think. And then Stephen Dallas is thinking to himself, the aunt, the aunt thinks you killed your mother. That's why she won't, like, um, that's what uh, Buck Mulligan had said to him previously in the first 20 pages. And he just has taught that line there again. Then he kind of sings this uh, verse next. Then here's a halt to Mulligan's aunt, and I'll tell you the reason why. She always keeps things decent in the Hannigan family. Uh, next line. His feet merged in sudden proud rhythm over the sand furrows along by the boulders of the south wall. He stared at them proudly, piled stone mammoth skulls, gold light on sea, on sand, on boulders. The sun is there, the cinder trees, the living houses. Um, just to read over that again, it's... it's uh, Jice the writer now has come back in again here and he's saying his feet merged, meaning Stephen and Dallas's feet merged in, pr in sudden prowling rhythm over the sand for us. He's still walking on the beach, along by the boulders of the south wall. That's where he's walking. He stared at them proudly. He's staring at the boulders, stone boulders, piled stone mammoth skulls. Now that's just great writing from Jice, brilliant uh, writing. Visualize these. Um, these stones and the sand that went behind them and they're spilling out and they remind you of that pile of stone mammoth skulls. Well, it, great imagery from Joyce again. Gold light on sea, sunlight on the sea, on sand, yes, on boulders. The sun is there, the slender trees, the lemon houses. Now this is I think Stephen de Dallas thinking again. The sun is there, the sun is there in France, in Paris in this case. The slender trees, he's thinking of Paris again, France. The lemon houses, I think. Yes, here we are, next line. Paris, rawly waking, crude, sunli crude sunlight on our lemon trees, moist pith, a fares of bread, the frog green wormwood, her matin incense court the air. Bellamo rises from the bed of his wife's lover's wife. <laughs> The kerchief fed housewife is a stir, a saucer of acetic. Acetic is it acid in her hands, and Rodot's Vons and Madeleine new make their tumbler beauties shattering with gold teeth, chassinons of pastry. Their mouths yellowed with the pus of Flan Breton, faces of, f faces of Paris mingle by. They're well, p they're well pleased. Pleasers, Carl Consigators. My pronunciation is just absolutely terrible. But um, um, we just go through this again. This whole paragraph, right? Paris. Now he's thinking about Paris when he's in Paris. We're rawly waking, crude sunlight on our lemon trees, mice pit of fares of bread. He's thinking now when he's in Paris. Um, all that goes along with uh, being in Paris. Uh, probably early morning, I would say. That fares up. That reminds me of like. Uh, where are we tall tall here? Uh, my pet of fares of bread. It's like fresh bread. Fares. Um, I just want to look something up here now. A second. To do. Um. Beer. What to me? Okay. Uh, fares. A <coughs> A thin circle of cake or a flower of oats. You know, it's something and it's got to do with France and about this kind of bread. So he's just thinking about waking up in France, in Paris. Um, the frog green woodworm, her matin incense. He's thinking about all the things that go that happened in, in you know when he was there. Courtier, Bellamo, Bellamo. Uh, he's probably some kind of an opera singer or something in France. Doesn't really matter. He's some popular person there. 
rises from the bed this is very important he rises from the bed of his wife's lover's bed <laughs> if you think about that you really have to think about it. he rises from the bed of his wife's lover's bed his wife's lovers or sorry his wife's lover's wife so that's a bit of humor from jive the kerchief head housewife is a stir a saucer of acetic acid in her hands like vinegar um Housewife is stir it's you know more uh, french housewives i think you know of the waking up in rodos rodots yvonne's and madeleine it them could be bakeries they could be like wine bears or something the coffee houses in in, in paris i would say you make their tumbled beauties um could be making bread something like that shattering with gold teeth um they're ch chattering i would say something on them lines chossons of pastry yes they're mostly making bread there their mouths yellowed with a puss of flan breton their mouths yellow so this bread is could be yellow and they'll be eating it you know that's what that means faces of faces of paris men go by they're well pleased pleasers curl consecutors which is i was hardly a parent said at all at all um well, let me see what that is a conqueror especially one of the spanish um conquerors is in the mix in the 16th century that's who he who he was then he's thinking about france again noon slumbers uh noon slumbers uh he's thinking about being there you know at noon at 12 o'clock and all the things that go along with all that now this is important here kevin egan rolls gunpowder cigarettes through fingers smeared with printer's ink sipping his green fairy as patrice his white above us gobblers fork spice beans down their gullets on dimmy satire a jet of coffee steam from the burnished cauldron she served me at his beck this is obviously french illis erlandis hollandis non but uh, whatever the other is it's all french uh, and uh, uh, non fromage the french people um will yeah, excuse me because <laughs> arlande uh, i can say that uh, oh um she thought you wanted a cheese balandes um just to go over that paragraph this you know that's uh no one slumbers he's there at 12 o'clock kevin egan's rolls now He's with a person called Kevin Egan. Kevin Egan rolls gunpowder cigarettes. That's great writing on Jai's there again. Gunpowder cigarettes. These are obviously cigarettes. They're, they're made with loose tobacco. You know, and you roll them up and you lick the paper and so on. Uh, gunpowder. That's you know, kind of like gunpowder. Kevin Egan rolls gunpowder cigarettes. Two fingers. Two fingers smeared with printer's ink. That's great imagery from Jai's. Printer's ink. He obviously works uh, as a printer sipping his green fairy as patrice his white sipping his green fairy sipping a drink just obviously green i would say as patrice his white now this patrice who's patrice um no patrice another person here sips his white which would be would have to be a white drink i would say now above us so it's obviously stephen Dallas, kevin egan and a guy called patrice right to treat them i said above us gobblers there must be a second floor in these coffee houses above us gobblers frock spice beans down their gullets yeah, that's great imagery that's great writing which is you know frocking beans down people are hungry on demis set a, a jet of coffee s steam from the burnished cauldron now that's you can nearly visualize it you can nearly practically see it a jet of coffee steam from the burnished cauldron just uh great imagery from joyce there again like she served me at his beck she served me the waitress serves stephen the dallas at his beck at the beck at the um instructions of kevin egan i would say now we have a couple of lines of uh french here i'm not going to um um i'm not going to even try and pronounce them because i just cannot speak french um she thought you wanted a cheese balandes she thought so kevin egan is, is would be saying to Stephen Dallas, she thought she wanted a cheese balandes whatever that is your post pran prandial oh i think post prandial is something got to do with um 
after a meal, after a dinner, you post pandile. Oh yeah, okay. It's like a dessert, right? Post pandile. Do you know the word post pandile? There was a fellow I once. In there was a fellow I knew once in Barcelona. Queer fellow used to call it his post pandile. Well, slancha. Well, slancha. Slancha is, is of the Irish Gaelic language. Slancha means. Um, what does slancha mean? I should know this. Um, <laughs> slancha means the good luck, kind of good luck, more or less a thing. Now, around the slabbed tables, the tangle of wind breaths, breaths, and grumbling gorges. That's great imagery from Jay's. Uh, so they're in this in this cafe, Stephen Dallas, Kevin Egan, and this other person called. Patrice, um, around the slabbed tables, the, you know, the tables in the cafes, the tangle of wind breaths, this great image from Joyce, and grumbling gorgeous. His breath hangs over our saw stained plates, the green fairy's fang trusting between his lips. Um, that's great image from Joyce again. His breath, meaning Kevin Egan's breath, hangs over our saw stained plates. Saw stained plates, that's great right from Joyce again. Saw stained you know, visualize uh, a meal after we need to have a plate and the sauce stands left in it. The green fairy's fang trust in between his lips. Visualize the cigarette in his mouth. The green fairy's fang. It's like a fang. He looks like a kind of a witch, a kind of a fairy, you know, kind of a... Think about the wicked witch of the west. The green fairy's fang. It's like a fang trusting between his lips. Uh, fabulous writing again. Of Ireland, the delicacans of hopes conspiracies of arthur griffin now now arthur griffin um when i was in school i would have known about arthur griffin but i forget uh now obviously uh he was a you know he was a, a figure in irish history arthur griffin um i don't know really much about him to be honest now but um um of ireland such as of hopes conspiracies of arthur griffin now to yoke me as his yoke fellow, our crimes are common cause. It could be referring to like um, Arthur Griffin. Uh, well, I know an Arthur Griffin later. Um, actually, not when this book was written, was um, one of the leaders of the 1916 Rising, which was basically uh, rebelling against England and so on and so forth. Um, you, your father's son, I know the vice. You, your father's son, I know the vice. I really can't make that out. Uh, need more time with this his fustian shirt his fustian shirt um stout fabric uh, sanguine flowered sanguine in that context that means red i think uh his fustian shirt sanguine flowered red with flowers and it trembles in spanish tassels at his secrets that could be something uh i think he could be still referring to Kevin Egan here wearing that shirt is possible. Spanish tassels. Um Spanish tassels. Um a kind of what come to mind here now would be it's kinda is like a bullfighter, you know, with special tassels when he's in the bull ring or something. Um uh, maybe uh I Stephen Dallas is thinking his shirt was wearing would remind you of like a bullfighter or something. And then he's thinking now these are the thoughts here from Stephen the Dallas again, Mr Drummond, famous journalist, Drummond, know what he called Queen Victoria, old hag with the yellow teeth. <laughs> um, so now Stephen Dallas is thinking about a guy called Mr. Drummond, he was who was a famous journalist at that time, I think. Drummond, know what he called, and he at one time in some article he must have called Queen Victoria an old hag with the yellow teeth. <coughs> now, Jason's humour again. And now we have a line of French Villa August with the dance was Maud Gone, beautiful woman. Now Maud Gone was uh Maud Gone I think was a very beautiful woman and um so Stephen Dallas here is thinking about Maud Gone. Yes, she was a beautiful woman. Uh she was actually Double B Yates uh was trying to marry Maud Gone. I don't think uh, they ever got married. But that's what Maud Gone was. She was a very famous woman in Irish uh, history basically. Um, La Petrie, um, M. Meleva, Felix for, for uh, all the seven years he's, he's just thinking about people. Now he's thinking about a person called Felix 
Ferrari know how he died. Now, if we could figure out, if we could find out who Felix Ferrar, we could be able to figure out these next few lines. Felix Ferrar, know how he died. Licentious men, licentious men. Um, I want to look something up here in a, a second. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Um, uh, licentious men. Hold on. Uh, he's thinking just too much thing about people like so licentious men. Um, I want to check something here because I'm not sure did my uh, computer go off. Actually, it did not. No, just the screen went blank. Uh, Felix for so for a, uh, this person uh, was a licentious uh, person. Uh, the frogman Bon a uh, Ferry. He, you know, he's he's in his thoughts now. He's thinking about you know. You know French lines and sayings. Uh, who rubs male nakedness in the bath at Uppsala? So, um, I something got to do with the bath so out there in a place called Uppsala, and someone um rubs male nakedness. <laughs> well, hopefully, it's a woman. Um, I rubbed male in the bath at Uppsala. Uh, more fair <laughs> um i think jace is referring to something else here uh i'm not really sure uh, she says m m yeah so obviously th this this bets you go in there and there must be some women there that would rub on you or something <laughs> i know all, all feminists are love to hear this here but <laughs> but this is what you this is uh all jace's humor here again you know trustless uh, not this monsieur I said uh, now uh, Stephen is else is thinking he's just thinking all this and he said most licentious custom and then he's thinking bats or sorry bats a most private thing I wouldn't let my brother not even my own brother most lascivious thing green eyes I see you fang I feel lascivious people so basically Stephen and Dallas is thinking here he's thinking bats is yeah, having a bet is the most private thing. I wouldn't let my brother, I wouldn't let my brother bathe me. Not even my own brother, no way. Most of the thing. And then he says, green eyes, I see you. Now, what's he referring to, green eyes, I see you? Fang, I feel, lascivious people. Um, what does he mean, green eyes, I see you? Um... I don't know what that actually means now. Um, it could be a woman passing him by, and which I don't think it is actually. Green eyes, I see you. Fang. It could be. It could be a woman has just passed him by on the beach. Maybe not very close. Any, or you know, and he his green eyes. He figures he has green eyes. Green eyes, I see you. Fang, I feel. So he feels something, <laughs> lascivious people. That could refer to that. It could refer to a few things. It could be. F it sh could still be thinking about uh, something along them lines in, in the bets. But um, it's green eyes. I see you. I see you. You know, kind of. That's what that means. Now, let me read on the next line. The blue fuse burns deadly between hands and burns clear. Loose tobacco shreds catch fire. A flame of acid smoke light or corner raw face bones under his peep of day boy's hat how the head center got away authentic version got up as a young bride man veil orange blossoms drove out the road to malahide did faith of lost leaders the betrayed wild escapes disguises clutched at gone not here um actually I have to read the next paragraph now before I'm going to tackle this. Spurned lover, I was a strapping young gosson at that time. I tell you, I'll show you my likeness one day. I was faith lover for her love. He proud with Colonel Burke. Colonel Richard Burke, tannist of his sept. Under the walls of Clerkenwell and crouching, saw a flame of vengeance hurl them upward in the fog. Shattered glass and toppling masonry, in gay Paris he hides, eager of Paris, unsought by any, 
save by me, making his dais stations. The dingy printing case, his tree taverns, the man martre lair he sleeps short night in Rue de la Garat Gauto <laughs> de Arm. The man sent with fly blown faces of the gone. Loveless, landless, wifeless. Now we've read a good, uh, you know, two actually two long paragraphs there, and um, <coughs> sometimes reading Ulysses. Now Joyce has set quite a minefield here for us, you know, and actually basically reading through Ulysses all the time, it's it's like going through minefields all the time. Now this is um, um one second, oh sorry. <coughs> Still trying to get over that call, but um, this seems like a, a very, uh, a very, s uh, it's like a minefield. What in the hell? What in the hell has gone on here? Um, it seems very confusing here. But this is I what I think is going on here. Right, the blue fuse burns deadly between hands and burns clear. Uh, the blue fuse burns deadly. Stephen Dallas is thinking here. It seems like he could be thinking about um, blue fuse. I don't know why it's blue though. Imagine a stick of dynamite. Um, the blue fuel burns deadly between hands and burns clear. Right? Um, just think about that. Lo and then he thinks loose tobacco. And then he think um, then he thinks loose tobacco shreds catch fire. A flame, an asterisk, smoke, light, or a corner. Um, this is kind of confusing, um, but let me go through it. Um, raw face bones under his peep of the boy's hat. How the head centre got away, authentic version. Got up as a young bride, man, veil, orange blossoms, drove out the road to Malahide, did faith of lost leaders, they betrayed, wild escapes, disguises, clutched at, gone, not here. If I was, I, if I was to hazard a guess, if I knew about more about this Kevin Egan, and I'm sure this Kevin Egan was is somebody in Irish history around this time. I would say that this Kevin Egan um, used possibly a stick of dynamite or a bomb or something, and he could have killed somebody. And this is what st I think Stephen de Dallas. And he's and this uh, Kevin Egan is possibly hiding out in France, um, and he can't go back to Ireland. He's you know like a fugitive, and I think Stephen de Dallas here is thinking about the whole incident he was involved in. Now I want to have to read through that again. Um, the blue fuel burns deadly between hands and burns clear. Loose tobacco shreds catch fire. A flame and. Right, the blue fuse burns deadly between hands and uh, he's thinking about Kevin Egan, you know, when he when he planted this bomb or stick a dynamite or something along them lines. Uh loose tobacco shirts catch fire, a flame, an asterisk smoke, light or corner. Light or corner now I could be a little off here, but raw face bones under his peep of the bias hat. How the head centre got away, authentic version. I don't know what that means at all. Got up no, got up as a young bride. Uh got up as a young bride. Oh, I don't want men, veil, orange blossoms. Drove now dr drove out the road to Mel Malahide, which is a place in Dublin. Did faith of lost leaders their trade, wild escapes. Disguises clutched at gone, not here. It's like this Kevin Egan had to he had to he had to leave Ireland after what he done this uh, deed, and you know somewhat connected with you know yeah yeah like um the fight against the English possibly. Uh, next line, spurned lover. Are he could have done it because over a woman here, as well, which kind of would make more sense actually. Born lover, I was a strapling young goss. Now Stephen Dallas is saying I was a strapling young gosson. Gosson is like a kid. I was only a kid at this time when this Kevin Egan uh, done this crime or whatever it was. I tell you, I'll show you. M then he's he's thinking. I I tell you, I'll show you my likeness one day. Meaning he's going to have a son. Or um, I was faith lover. 
a lover for her love lover for her lover for her love he prowled he prowled with Colonel Richard Burke tenants as if under the walls of Clerkenwell and crouching saw a flame of vengeance hurled them upwards in the fog now this Kevin Egan could have been could have bombed this Richard Burke um, over a woman possibly I was lover for her love he prowled lover for her love he prowled with Colonel Richard Burke ten of step under the walls of Clerkenwell this is where it probably happened and crouching he's like crouching down under the walls and I saw a flame of vengeance a flame of vengeance he must have thrown this stick of dynamite or something hurled them upward in the fog hurled them upward in the fog it, you know it could be the body or bodies whatever now shattered glass and toppling toppling masonry now we came across this line before when he was in the school Stephen the Dallas or something or e earlier on in the book remember if 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 uh, listeners remember he, th he taught this line before shattered glass and toppling masonry um, I, I think I referred to before as like in a war that's what happens but you see this has, has popped up again which happened in, in Ulysses of the lot things pop up uh, and this has popped up shattered glass and toppling masonry so this talk could be referred to this uh, bombing incident or something now in gay Paris he hides so in, in Paris this um, um, Egan this Kevin Egan is hides in K in gay Paris he hides Egan of Paris here we are so why is this uh, Kevin Egan hiding in Paris he's obviously hiding because he done something in Ireland and he had to leave in gay Paris he hides Egan of Paris unsought by he's not uh, he's they're not looking for many more by any save by me um so to say it by me i don't know where's what stephen is else's um connection to kevin egan of paris um i don't know to be honest um could he could it possibly be that he's uh um i don't know there's some connection there which we'll probably find out before the book is over now making his day stations uh this is uh, making his day stations the dingy printing case right this is steve this kevin egan in paris making his day stations the din he works in a dingy printing you know printing case so you know printing press he's three taverns the three taverns he drinks in or whatever the ma the mont Martry layer he sleeps short night sometimes he sleeps there i think rue de la gate door Demiscent with flying fly blown faces of the gone. Now loveless, landless, wifeless. Now this is very important here. Loveless. He's loveless. So I think he this Kevin Egan done this because of, of a woman and he could have blown up uh, his rival. <laughs> something like that. It's something along them lines. So loveless is no longer with the woman. Landless is no longer in Ireland wifeless and he wifeless wifeless he hasn't a wife it's something along them lines now if i knew if i knew anything about this kevin egan or if i got more time with this i definitely would uh, be able to shed more light on it but th as the as the moment that's that's the general kind of gist of that i think she is quite nicely comfy without her outcast men this is the woman right uh, uh, still an earned her outcast men that would be kevin egan Madame in Rue Le Le Tart, Canary and two book lodgers. She's got a canary bird and two book lodgers, two lodgers, two people to stay with her. Um, peachy cheeks. She's got peachy cheeks. She wears a zebra, st zebra skirt, frisky as a young thing's. Um, she's a frisky woman. <laughs> Jay's here. She's frisky as a young thing. Spurned and under undespairing. Now tell Pat you saw me, won't you? I wanted to get poor Pat a job one time. Mon fell soldier of France. I taught him to sing. The boys of Kikini are s stout roaring blades. Know that old lay. I thought Patrice that old Kikini Saint Canis, Strongbow's Castle on the Nore goes like this oh oh he takes me nepper tandy by the hand 
or the bias of clicking it. Now just to go over that again. Um, uh, you do loveless, landless, wifeless. She is quite. She is quite nicely comfy with her outcast man. She is quite comfy with her outcast man. Now this actually is now here. You see, this is what Jais does all the time. He leads you down a certain path and all of a sudden he swings around like a 90 degree turn and it's like he's laughing to himself like oh so you thought uh, you were thinking there it was about Kevin Egan's other woman and now it's actually he's talking about the woman he's with in France. She isn't quite nicely comfy with her outcast man which is Kevin Egan. So this is this woman he's with in France. Or outcast man, madam, madame, yeah. In Rue to the Canary, she's a canary and two book lodgers. Peachy cheeks, a zebra skirt, frisky the young things, burned and undespairing. Um Tell Pat you saw me. Tell Pat that would be short for Patrice, which is this other person. Now Patrice, I would if I was to guess here, would I would say Patrice is the son of Kevin, Ebe Kevin Egan. Now Stephen and Dallas and Kevin and Patrice would be around the one age and they're obviously friends. They could be cousins, uh, 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 which seems more like that. Tell Pat you saw me. Tell Patrice you saw me, won't you? I wanted to get poor Pat, I wanted to get poor Patrice a job one time. Soldier friends, I taught him to sing. I taught him to sing the Bys, which is a, a song here in Ireland, the Bys of Kilkenny. I wanted... Uh, I had to do what I'm at tall, 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 tall. I told him to sing the Boys of Kinney are stout roaring blades. That's a popular song in Ireland, the Boys of Kilkenny. Um, Kilkenny, uh, nothing to do with Kilkenny Harland, but whatever. <laughs> no, that only, I thought, yeah, Pat was, yeah, short for Patrice. You see what Joyce is doing all the time here? He's, he's pa Pat and he's, he, he's, what Joyce is doing uh, in Ulysses, he's getting you to think. He's, he want, he's trying to involve the reader completely in his work and by dragging you in completely, that's when this imagery comes really alive. And you're, because you're thinking, tell Pat, Pat, you're, you're thinking, who the hell is Pat, 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 Pat? And then you think, oh, Pat, that could be short for Patrice. Tell Pat you saw me, won't you? I wanted to get poor Pat a job on time. Soldier friend, I told him to sing the Bible beginning, our stout roaring blades. Know that old lake. And then he said, I thought Patrice that. Which, yes, that is correct. I thought pr Patrice that old Kilkenny, St. Canace, Strongbow's Castle on the Nore. That's a castle in Kilkenny, and the Nore is a river. Strongbow was a. Strongbow was an English. Um, he was a figure in English history, strong boy. I think he was a very, very popular uh, leader or something. Goes like this. Oh, it takes me, he takes me Nepper Tandy by the hand. Nepper Tandy. It's another, it's another line from an Irish song here. Nepper Tandy by the hand. Oh, the by the Kilkenny. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, explain. Weak, wasting hand on mine. They have forgotten Kevin Egan. Not he them, remembering thee, or see on. Um. Okay, we're nearly out. Of we're nearly out of these thoughts now. There, uh, in that particular case. Weak wasting hand, on mine. Weak wasting hand on mine. Um. I don't know what that really means, but I was hazard to guess it could be the woman, laying her hand on him in his back in his thoughts. They have forgotten Kevin Egan. That could be the woman that was left behind. We, she laid his hand on him. Uh, she knew he was going to France or something. Uh, I don't know. So I'd have to think more about that. They have forgotten Kevin Egan. In Ireland, they've forgotten about Kevin Egan. Not he them. Not he them. He hasn't forgotten really about them and about Ireland. Remember the Ocean. Now next time he had come nearer the edge of the sea and wet sand slapped his boots. Great writing. The new air greeted him. The new air greeted him, harping in wild nerves, wind of wild air, of seas of brightness. Here I am, not walking out to Kish, light ship, am I? He stood suddenly, his feet beginning to sink slowly in the quaking soil, turned back. So now he's come out of his thoughts, and in uh, um, Joyce has entered here again. He had come nearer the edge of the sea, 
Stephen the Dallas had come near the edge of the sea and wet sand, wet sand slapped his boots because the little trick or the little waves are slapping his boots and wet sand slapped his boots. Just visualize that. Put your mind there. Uh, visualize a person at the edge of, uh, just edge of the water, a wet sand slapped his boots, just slapping the boots. Great imagery from Jais there again. The new air greet the new air greeted him. The new air, the new breezes coming in the sea, happening in wild nerves, like a s swirling around. Yeah. Wind of wild air of seeds of brightness. Um here I am not walking out to Kish Lightship. So here I am not walking out this is now Stephen Adelas has come in here with a line of thinking here I am not walking out to Kish lightship which is a lighthouse probably am I he stood suddenly his feet beginning to sink slowly in the quaking sand turn back now this is um Jais has come back in again here again he stood suddenly which is Stephen Adelas stood suddenly his feet beginning to sink his feet beginning to sink slowly in the quaking soil um that's just fabulous writing from Jais and great imagery there Turn back. Now he's thinking, turn back. Will I turn back? Will I go back the other way? Turning, he scanned the south shore, his feet sinking again slowly in new sockets. The cold domed room of the tower waits. Through the barbicans, the, shaf the shafts of light are moving ever. Are moving ever. Slowly, even as my feet are sinking, creeping dustward over the dial floor. Blue dusk, nightfall deep blue night in the darkness of the dome they wait their pushed back chairs my obelisk valise valis, around a board of abandoned platters who to clear it he has the key i will not sleep there when this night comes a shut door of a silent tower entombing entombing their blind bodies the panther saheb and his pointer call no answer he lifted his feet up from the suck and turned back by the mole of boulders. Take all, keep all, my soul walks with me, former forms. So in the moon's mid-watches I pace the paths about the rocks in sable silvered, hearing Elishmore's tempting flood. <coughs> uh, that's just uh, brilliant writing from Jais. Now this is another, I, I don't want to keep harping on about this all the time. Um, but it needs to be said really um, this is another reason why you can't rush uh, uh, you cannot rush uh, Ulysses or uh, Jace is writing any Jace is writing because you miss you won't want to miss so much and if you really want to call yourself a Jace connoisseur <laughs> I'm not sure now how I kind that phrase Jace connoisseur but you know it's some you know whatever we get it out there and all Jace fans uh, uh, are you a Jace connoisseur now, to be a Jais connoisseur, uh, what 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 would qualify someone being a Jais connoisseur? Well, I think what would qualify someone being a Jais connoisseur if they have read Ulysses even once. Yes, you could be considered a Jais connoisseur. If you read it twice, you could be, you know, a Jais connoisseur twice, two times, three times over, so on and so forth. But to be a real Jais connoisseur, a real um like a black belt jays connoisseur somebody would have to put the book in front of you and f open it at any two pages and say explain practically every line of them two pages to me and if you can do that 90 percent then you can say yes you're a black belt jays connoisseur um whatever like uh jays connoisseurs uh that's why you cannot rush Ulysses, and I w uh, I w I'm going to try and explain again here why. Uh, reading this back again, turning he's turning now he turned around, turning he scanned the shore south. So he's looking around. To b just put your mind in the beach. His feet sinking again slowly in new sockets. His feet sinking into new sockets. Just visualize the water coming in there. The cold domed room of the tower waits. In the morning. Now he's thinking that coal. No, he's not actually thinking the coal domed room of the tower waits. The tower, you know, uh, Martella Tower, where he was sleeping last night, that waits for him tonight. Now, 
remember we read this before, are kind of through the barbicans the shafts of light are moving ever. In this tower at the moment, the coming in from the roof, the shafts of light are moving. They're moving ever. Through the barbicans the shafts of light are moving ever. Slowly ever as my feet are sinking. They're moving the shafts of light are moving around this tower right now as this is happening. And uh, are moving ever slowly ever as my feet are sinking. Creeping just word over the dial floor. Creeping just word word over the dial floor. Why do the guys call it the dial floor? It's like this light is, is slowly going around. Uh, in, you know, in the f in the uh, in the f in the floor of this uh, Martella Tower. Um, visualize the sun. The sun is moving in the sky. And therefore, it's it's thinning the shaft. We said just take one particular shaft of light. That I one small hole in this Martella Tower, uh, for example, and the sun is moving. So therefore, that shaft of light would be moving, moving over the floor. It's coming from the roof down to the floor. It's moving, moving over the dial floor. It's like it's moving around. Now that's brilliant right there. It's creeping just for over the dial floor blue dusk blue dusk nightfall they need to uh, be thinking here or uh, Joyce is just saying this maybe blue dusk um nightfall nightfall think about nightfall it's like kind of blue dusk deep blue night in the darkness of the doom of the doom they wait this would be like his book mulligan of stephen haynes would be in the doom in the darkness of the doom they wait in the tower they are pushed back chairs to be sitting in the chair pushed back my abalus valus his little suitcase around a board of abandoned platters around a board you know the place left there who to clear it who's going to clear that table he has the key Stephen does the thing and he has the key book mulligan has the key i will not sleep there when this night comes he Stephen does the thing and i will not sleep there when the tonight when this night comes a shut door of a silent tower, a shut door of a silent tower entombing their blind bodies. Um, their blind bodies. Um, a shut door. When they're asleep at night, I think this is what he's referring to. When they're a shut door of a silent tower, it's like it's it's entombing them. It's like a tomb. The tower. Their blind bodies. Their blind bodies. They're obviously asleep. I would say. Yes, blind bodies. Great writing Jai's there again. I mean, must underline that. The Panther Saheb. Now he's thinking about Stephen, the dream he had uh, the night before with Stephen Haynes uh, about the Panther and so on. This Panther and his Pinter. And his Pinter. I don't know what he means by Pinter there. Call no answer. Call no answer. I don't know what you mean by call, no answer. Um, now, it could have come out of them thoughts and it's there could be something else happening now on the beach. Call, no answer. Um, uh, I'm not sure, I have to read on. He lifted his feet up from the suck and turned back to to the mall of bowlers. He lifted his feet. Now, he's just visualize them standing on the beach and his feet uh, sank into the sand, into, into the, in the sand, the wet sand. He lifted his feet up from the suck. He, when you lift your feet up, the kind of up from the suck, and turn back by the mole of ball. Uh, so he turned back by the mole of bowlers, like bowlers, you know, along the beach there or something. Take all, keep all, take all, keep all. I don't know what that means really. My soul walks me. You just think now. You, Stephen, that's the thing. My soul walks me. Everyone has, like everybody has a soul. I think you know. If you believe in God, you you have a soul, but your soul would have to be inside you. My soul walks with me, form of forms. Um, so in the moons, so in the moons, mid watches, I pace the paths above the rocks in sable, silvered, hearing Elish Moore's tempting flood. So in the moons, mid watches, I pace the paths above the rocks in sable, silvered, sable, silvered. That's great writing. I, I'm not. Trying to figure out what that's about there now. Hearing Elish Moore's tempting flood. Elish Moore 
it's some kind of a song or a poem or something along them learn and he yes it's, uh, um I need more time to figure out them two lines, but it's not that really that important. The flood is following me, I can watch it flow past from here, get back then by the pool big road to the strand there. He climbed over the sedge and ely or weeds and sat on a stool of rock, resting his ash plant ash plant in a grike. Now I just have to check something here now, see what time okay, how we go at the time. Now Stephen Gladys is thinking here, the flood is following me, the flood is following me, like the uh, the um the water, the flood is following me. I can watch it flow past from here. The fl he's, he's watching the water flow past from here. Get back and yeah, you get back then by the pool bag road. He's now he's trying to figure out how am I going to get you know, wherever he's going, how am I going to get where I'm going? Uh, yeah, I'm going to get back there by the pool bag road to the strand there. That's the way I'm gonna go. Now he climbed over the sedge, you know, on the on the beach it seems. And Ely Orweeds and Ely Orweeds. Great image of Jais. And he sat sat on a stool of rock. So he sat on a rock that would remind would remind you of a stool. Now he sat down on a rock, remind you of a stool. Resting his asp ash plant in a grike. Now remember the ash plant, the branch of of of, <laughs> of the branch of a of a of a tree, which he uses a, like a walking stick. Resting his asp, it's called an ash plant. Resting his so he's carrying this ash plant. Resting his ash, pl ash plant in a grike. So now we know he's still carrying this ash plant. You know, kind of a walking stick thing. A bloated carcass of a dog lay lulled on bladder rack. Before him, the gunwheel of a boat, sunk in sand, uncaught a sable. Lewis, Villiet Latte or whatever, called Gottler's prose. These heavy sands are language, tide and wind have silted here. And there the stone heaps of dead builders, a warden of weasel rats, high gold there, try it, you have gone. Sands and stones, heavy of the past, Sir Louth's ties. Mind you don't get one bang on the on the ear. I'm a bloody well gigant rolls all them bloody well bowlers, bones for my stepping stones, fee fa fum, I smell the blood of an Irishman. <laughs> so just to read back on that paragraph again. This is great writing, oh, you know every line in this is just fabulous writing. A bloated carcass of a dog lulled. So there was a dead dog in the water or something. A bloated carcass of a, of a, of a, of a dog lay lulled on bladder rack. Lulled. The water is moving it. Before him, the gunwheel of a boat. Before him. Stephen, before Stephen, the, the gunwheel of a boat. An old broken boat stuck in the water, the sand. Sunk, yeah, sunk in sand. It's, you know, it's a bit of a boat sunk in sand. And he refers to it in French, uh, whatever that means. Uh, Louis Velotta call Gartler's prose. Now, if I knew what that meant in French, you'd be able to figure out this Louis Velas called Gartler's prose. That's all that means. Then he's thinking, these heavy sands are language, tide and wind have silted here. These heavy sands are language, tide. They're the, la they're the language of tide and wind have silted here. Um, um, I'd may need more time with that, but Anybody listen now and just think about that enough, you'll be able to figure that out. And there the stone heaps now and there he's looking at somewhere else and he sees the stone he stone heaps of dead builders. Why do they call them dead builders? The stone heaps of dead builders. So he's looking somewhere else and he's seen heaps of stones of dead builders. The people that you know, it's very it's uh, the people that heap these stones together are dead, basically. A warden of reason a warn of weasel rats. Jais <laughs> is great. He's a brilliant writer. Uh, he had to throw in. Yes, there probably would be a warden of weasel rats in there, you know, hiding and nesting and so on. Hide gold there. Yeah. You hide gold there. Why could you hide gold there? Yes, you hide gold there because the rats. <laughs> Try it. You have some. S and then he's thinking sands and stones, heavy of the past. So our loud ties. Um, mind you don't get one bang on the ear. Mind you don't get a stone in the side of the ear, more or less. I am a bloody well gigant rolls all them bloody. I am the bloody well giant rolls all them bloody well bowlers. 
Jenny's just thinking, I'm the bloody well giant that brawled on them bowlers. Bones, them are bones for my stepping stone. He's, he said, I'm a kind of a giant. And he's thinking, fee fa fum, I smell the blood of an Irish man. That's all that means. This is a great writing on this next line. A pint live dog grew into sight, running across the sweep of sand. Lord, is he going to attack me? Respect his liberty. You will not be master of others or their slave. I have my stick. Sit tight. From further away, walking shoreward across from the crested tide, figures to the two Maries, is it? They have tucked it safe among the bulrushes. Peekaboo, I see you. Know the dog. He is running back to them. Who? Uh, that's square right of Joyce again. A pint, a pint, a pinter, obviously. A pinter, a pinter live dog grew into sight. Why did he grow into sight? He grew into sight because he's coming closer. So Stephen is asked to look in the di distance and he sees a dog and he grew into sight. He got bigger as he came closer to him. A pint live dog grew into sight. It kind of reminds me a little bit of my other favourite writer the great poet Emily Dickinson when she in one of her poems she said um, night is the morning's night is the morning's canvas which is one of one of the greatest lines a fabulous line in poetry so what does night is the morning canvas means it means visualize you're looking out in the darker night and you see the night and you, you stay looking up for the whole night and the morning is coming you slowly but surely start to see little things here and there the morning's canvas it's like a painter is painting you see a little bit of a tree you see the leaves and as the morning comes up you, they get clearer and the morning is up the picture is completely clear night is the morning's canvas that kind of reminds me of that a pint live dog grew into sight uh, grew into sight you see um, uh, just great writing there. Running across the sweep of sand. So this dog is coming. He's running across the sweep of sand. Then Stephen is thinking, Lord, is he going to attack me? Is the dog going to attack me? And then he's thinking, respect it. I must respect his liberty. I must respect his liberty. You will not be masters of others or their slave. You will not be masters of others or their slave. Um, uh, kind of referring to the dog or something there along the lines. And he's thinking, then he's thinking, I have my stick. If the dog, is sit tight, I have my stick. He's thinking, if this dog attacks me, I have my stick, the ash plant stick, to hit the dog with, of course. Sit tight, sit tight, I sit tight, and you know, I'm not going to move here. From farther away, from farther away, walking shoreward across the crested tide, figures two. Now he's looking further in the distance. From farther away, walking shoreward, walking towards the shore, Cross from the crested tide, great line, crested tide, think about the tide and the crested tide. Figures two, he sees two people, figure, I see, he sees two other, two people in the distance. The two Marias, he calls them the two Marias, is it? And then he said, they have tucked it safe o among the bulrushes. Now, these two people have, have, have hid something among bulrushes. I don't know what they've hid there, it could be. I don't know, I'd have to give that more thought. Uh, it could just be rubbish, the dish getting rid of rubbish and they've tucked it under the bulrushes. And then he says, Peekaboo, uh huh, I see you. Uh -huh, you're not supposed to do that. No, the dog. He's thinking, No, the dog. He's running back to them. Um, he's thinking, Oh, the dog. So the dog must belong to these two people. He's running back to them. Who? Um, I'd like to give that a bit more thought, but I have to move on. Uh, galley, galleys of the Lockhands ran here to beach in quest of prey, their blood beaked prows riding low on the molten pewter surf. Dane Vikings, Turks of tomahawks, a glitter on their breasts, when Malachi wore the collar of gold, school of turtle hide whales stranded in hot noon, uh, spouting, hobbling in the shallows. Then from the starving cage work city, a horde of Jerkened dwarfs, my people, with flares, knives, running, scaling, hacking, and green blubbery quail meat. Um, now, he's thinking, right, years gone by, galleys, which are ships of the Lockdown, ran here. Years gone by, these galleys, these ships, came, on, came onto this beach in quest of prey. 
They came here in quest of prey to rob and loot. Their blood-beaked prows riding low on the molten purer surf. You know, after all the people they killed and so on and so forth. Dean Vikings. Um, going back hundreds of years ago in Irish history probably. These, referring to the, the Vikings, they should come ashore and rob and loot and kill. Dean Vikings. Tarks of tomahawks. That's the kind of weaponry they had at the time. Glitter on their breasts. Great image of Joyce. When Malachi wore the collar of gold. When Malachi. So Malachi was some uh, figure in Irish history. Going back in the day as they say. Uh, when he wore a collar of gold. Which would be them times. That was the clothing they wore. A school of turtle hide whales. And then he's thinking again. A yeah, and also I remember back a school of turtle hide whales stranded in hot noon. He's thinking about yeah, I remember the time a a, a school a school of whales got stranded on this shore here, spouting, hobbling in the shadows. They couldn't get back. They were stranded on the beach. Then from the starving cage work city, a horde of jerkin dwarfs my people. Now the people obviously were yeah were poor that time. The the whales were were stranded and they come out you know to chop them up and eat them. Then from the starving starving cage work city, a horde of jerkin dwarfs, my people, with flares knife with knives in their hands, running, scaling, hacking, and green blubbery whale meat. So they killed and chopped up these whales and and then he's thinking famine, plague, and slaughters. Their blood is in me. Um, his ancestors he's thinking about. Their lust, my ways. I moved among, and then he's think. I moved among them on the on the frozen liffy. That I, and chanting among the spluttering resin fires, I spoke to no one, none to me. Um. Let me just think about that now a second. Their blood is me. He's thinking about his ancestors. Their lust, my ways. I moved among them on the floor on the frozen liffy. Um. So uh, that obviously happened, uh, the, f the whale incident, probably during the summer. And then he's probably thinking, he's thinking maybe at that time during the winter. Um, you know, the Liffey, Liffey is the river in Dublin and it was frozen over. Uh, and he said, he more than I moved among them. I was, yeah, I, was, I, I walked around them uh, among, among the spluttering resin fires. So... Um, when the Liffey, this Liffey, River Liffey was frozen, uh, you know, people were there with spluttering rather than fires and they could be frying up the whale meat. Who knows? Uh, maybe that winter, uh, something along the line. And in these parts, I spoke to no one. You know, no one spoke, uh, none to me. The dog's bark ran towards him, stopped, ran back. Dog of my enemy. I just simply stood stood. St Stood pale, silent, bade about. Terrible Amadeusin, a primrose duplet, fortune's knave, smiled on my fear. For that are you pining, the bark of their applause, pretenders live their lives. The Bruce brother, the Bruce's brother, Thomas Fitzgerald, Silken Knight, Perkin Warwick, York's false skin, in breeches of silk, in of white rose ivory, wonder of a day, and Lambert Simmel. With a tail of nens and sutlers, a scullion crowned, all king's sons, paradise of pretenders, then and now. He saved men from downing, and you shake from a at a car's yelping. Um, another minefield from Jai's here again. <laughs> um, the dog's back ran towards him. So the dog that's on the beach is running towards Stephen Dallas right now. The dog's back ran towards him. It stopped, and it ran back. It ran away. And then he's thinking, dog of my enemy. I don't know why he said dog of my enemy. Um, maybe the person that owns the dog could be an enemy of him. Something along them lines, maybe. I just simply stood pale, silent, bade about. Now he's thinking about that time when, on the frozen r uh, Liffey, when the people had the fires and so on. He's thinking, I just simply stood pale. He just stood around, silent, bade about. He just moseyed about. Uh, a primrose doublet, fortune's knave, smile on my fear. I can't make this out. I need more time to actually figure out this next paragraph. And 
it's it's I'm very getting very tired here right now. Um, I need more. T I definitely need more. Uh, uh, f more time with it. A primitive doublet, fortune's knave, smiled on my fear. For that are you pining? The bark of their applause. The bark of their applause. Could be referring to the dog or something. Pretenders live their lives. The Bruce brothers. Uh, he's thinking about the Bruce's brother, Thomas Fitzgerald, Silken Knight, uh, Pekin Warburg, York's false skin in breaches of silk of white rose ivory, wonder of a day, and Lambert Simmel with a tale of nuns and sutlers, a scullion crown, all king's sons. Paradise of pretenders then and now, he said, now, um, these are, I think he's just thinking about people there. Now, if I, if, um, if I if I if someone could look up all these people's names and you know, and I knew who they were, then you could figure out this pretty pretty easily. You know, uh, he's just thinking about people there basically. This uh, Thomas Fitzgerald, uh, Perkin Warbeck, and so on, and they're just people in history, probably. You know, uh, not really a big deal to the whole uh, Ulysses book as such. They're just people. They're he's thinking about people basically, and that's it. Uh, Paris Springer is in and now he saved men from drowning. Now he's thinking about Book Mulligan. I remember earlier in the book, he was think he was thinking Book Mulligan saved men from drowning. So he's thinking now about Book Mulligan. He saved men from drowning, and you shake mean himself at a cur at a dog's yelping. So you know, <laughs> uh, he's thinking compared to Book Mulligan, he, uh, he's you know brave man. And look at I'm shaking my dog here. But the courtiers who mocked. Guido in our San Michel Michele were in their own house. House of, we don't want any of your medieval F, I can't even pronounce that word. Would you do what he did? A boat would be near, a lifeboat. Netta put there for you. Would you or would you not? The man that was drowned nine days ago off me. Um, just in four or five lines there. Uh, he's just thinking about somebody and uh Paris and then he saved men brown and you shake it but the chorus who mocked um you need i need to you need to do a bit more research into that to kind of figure out what's going on there but it kind of really doesn't matter you know now he's thinking would you or would you not um um now the man that was drowned nine days ago remember the person that was drowned uh, earlier in the book read but now he's thinking about him the man that was drowned nine days ago off maiden's rock so this is the person again that has drowned he's he's appeared back in the book again you know so uh stephen is thinking about him they are waiting they are waiting for him now they're waiting for this person to come to the surface the truth spit it out and <laughs> the truth spit it out that's like an irish saying a well-known irish saying here the truth will you spit it out there and in this case, he's referring to spit it out, spit out the body, <laughs> so we can see it. I would want to, I would try, I am not a strong swimmer. Um, water, so cold, soft, when I put my face into it in the basin, at clown gowns, can't see who's behind me, out quickly, quickly. Do you see the tide flowing quickly in on all sides, sheeting the loaves of sands quickly, shell cocoa colored if i if i had land under my feet i want his life still to be his mind to be mine a drowning man his human eyes scream to me out of horror of his death i with him together down i could not save her uh waters bitter death lost um basically what that means there is the man that was drowned nine days ago off Mirren's rock um I have popped into this book again now they're waiting for him to come up. The truth spit it out. I want to. I would try. And then he's thinking, I am not, Stephen Stephen is thinking, I am not a strong swimmer. And then he's thinking, he could have put his hand in the water here. Water cold soft. I think he put his hand in the water right here, if possible. Water cold soft. And now he's him now he starts thinking about the water. When I put my face into it in the basin at Clangowns, whatever this Clangowns was, which has meant been mentioned a few times, a basin, he was thinking about when he put his face into the basin, basin of water, can't see. When you put your face into like a bowl of water, more or less, can't see. You won't be able to see who's behind me. He's thinking at that time who's behind me. Out quickly, out quickly. What you get out quickly? 
do you see the tide flowing quickly and on all sides? He's kind of thinking about the tide now here. Do you see the tide flowing quickly and on all sides? Sheeting the loaves of sands quickly, shell coloured, shell coca coloured. Great writing. If I had land under my feet, I want his life. Um, if I had land under my feet, I want his life still to be his, mine to be mine, a drowning man. His human, his human eyes scream to me out of horror of his death. I, with him together, down, I could not save him. Waters, bitter death lost. Now he's thinking about the man that drowned, um, I think. If I had land under my feet. Now he's thinking, I want his life still to be his. He's thinking, the person that drowned, I want his, I want him, his life to be his, not to have died. And my life to be mine. A drowning, he's thinking about him again. A drowning man, his human eyes scream to me out of horror of his death. Just imagine him drowning, I would think there. His human eyes scream to me out of horror of his death. I... And now he's saying, I, with him together, if he was, wi when this person was drowning, if he was with him, with him together, down, if if he was trying to save him, the two of them would probably went under because I could not save him, because he's not a strong swimmer. Waters, bitter, death, lost. He's just thinking them thoughts. Next line, a woman and a man, I see her skirt is pinned up, I bet. Their dog ambled about a bank of dwindling sand trotting sniffing on all sides looking for something lost in a past life suddenly he met off like a bounding hare ears flung back chasing the shadow of a low skimming gull the man shrieked the man's shrieked whistle stuck struck his limp ears he turned bounded back came nearer trotted on twinkling shanks on a field tinny a buck trippant proper unattired at the lace fringe of the tide he halted with stiff four hoofs, seaward pointed ears, his snout lifted his snout lifted, barked at the wave noise, hers of sea morse, the serpent towards his feet, curling, unfurling, many crests, every ninth breaking, plashing, not splashing, plashing from fair from further out, waves and waves. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Um that's just great, brilliant writing from Joyce again. Um, now, a woman and a man, I see her skirt, he's pinned up, I bet. Now, Stephen Dance is looking in the distance, and these could be the two people that were referred to on the previous page. He sees a woman and a man. I see her skirt, he's more or less saying, this woman, pinned up, I bet. Um, so the two of them uh, must be wading into the water and the woman has lifted her skirts. I see her skirties would, would be her under skirties I would say. <laughs> I see her skirties pinned up I bet. So this is what Stephen uh, the dad is thinking. Um, uh, pinned up a bit naughty boy. <laughs> um, a woman and a man I see her skirties. So he's watching the woman she's going in and she's lifting her skirt uh, pinned up a bit. Now their dog. Oh yes, the dog belongs to him. Their dog ambled. Now this is this is just brilliant writing though from Joyce the way he describes this dog on the beach and he going back and forth. He really paints the picture clearly. Their dog ambled about a bank of dwindling sand. Dog now trotting, sniffing on all sides, looking for something lost in a past life. The dog is sniffing all. He's look and and <laughs> he's looking for something lost in a past life. Suddenly he made off like a bounding hare. To visualize the dog bounding off. Ears flung back, chasing the shadow of a low skinned gull. Do you visualize the shadow of a of a of a of a, of a, of a, of a, um, a seagull on on the beach and he sees the shadow of the dog runs after. Great writing Joyce. The man shrieked whistles stuck his limp ears. So the owner, which is the man, whistled at the dog. He turned, the dog turned, bounded back, came nearer, came nearer to them, trotting on twinkling shanks. Great line, Joyce, twinkling shanks, these legs. On a field, Tinny, a book, Trippant. Now, we did come across this book and Trippant before in the book. Um, and it's appeared again, you know. 
On a field tinny tinny, a buck trippant, proper unattired, I'm not really hundred percent sure about that. At the lace fringe of the tide, visualize the tide and the whiteness in it. At the lace fringe of the tide. He halted the dog with stiff four hoofs, seaward pointed pointed ears. Visualize you can ne you nearly see the dog there, it's so clear. His snout lifted, barking at the wave knife. The dog is lifting up. And he hears the he hears the the sound of the waves and he barks. He his his snout lifted back. Uh, sorry, he, his snout lifted barked at the wave noise. No, the wave noise and he starts barking at it. Hairs of sea morse. They separated it towards his feet. Um, these must be small little fish uh, or something. I would say. Curling, unfurling many crests, the waves, unfurling many crests, every ninth, every ninth, like every ninth breaking, plashing from a fair, from further out, waves and waves. Uh, great rain, just all over here. His snout lifted back to the wave knife, hers, hers of sea morse. Uh, oh, just he could be hers of sea morse. Uh, yeah, that could be. It's like uh, the waves and the whiteness in the waves, herds of sea morse. Just it's like their herds coming in constantly. So separately towards his feet, yeah, in the top of his feet, the waves, curling, unfurling, many crests, curling, and furling many crests, the crests of the waves. Every ninth, every ninth wave breaks. I think uh, most people know that. That every ninth wave comes in, comes in, it breaks a start different way. Plashing now, Jice, Jice is more or less saying to us here now. I ho what Jice is really saying because there's no S here. It's just plashing. P L A S H I N G. There's no S. Um. So he's saying plashing. Now, when he's saying plashing here, I think Jice is more or less. Well, first of all, he's he's kind of saying to us now. I hope you're paying attention here, because de he's deliberately omitted this letter S. Now, if you're not fully paying attention, you're not going to take notice of this. So it's not a splashing, it's like a plashing. <laughs> That's great. This humor from Joyce again. Plashing. Um, from fair, from further out, waves and waves. Just the way, just the, way the whole scene is described there by Joyce is, is fantastic, you know. Next line. Cockle pickers, they waded a little way in the water and stooping, soused their bags. And lifting them again, waded out. The dog yelped, running to them, reared up and pawed them, dropping on all fours. Again, reared up at them with mute, bearish fawning, unheeded. He kept by them as they came towards the drier sand. A rag of wolf's tongue, red panting from their jaws. His speckled body ambled ahead of them and then loped off at a calf's gallop. The carcass lay on his path. He stopped, sniffed, stalked round it. Brother, nosing closer, went round it, sniffing rapidly like a dog all over the dead dogs bedaggled, fell. Dog skull, dog sniff, eyes on the ground, moves to one great goal, a eh, poor dog body. Here lies poor dog body, tatters out of that, your mongrel. Uh, just describing that now again. Now, this man and woman that have the dog, cockle pickers. They're cockle. Actually, what they're, they're the reason they came to the the beach here or the sea is they're out picking cockles, which are like a shellfish, I think, a small shellfish here, cockles. Um, a famous song in Dublin here called "Cockles and Mussels." So people used to go to the beach and they pick up these cockle pickers. They're co they're picking small shellfish. So they're cockles. They're, they've come to pick up these cockles out in the water. They waded a little way in the water so the way in the water and stooping they're stooping down south their bags they're carrying bags and they sh you know basically shoved or shoved <laughs> shoved <laughs> they pushed the ba bags down into the water they south their bags and lifting them again they lifted them again you can nearly visualize the water spilling out there and w lifting them again waded out they waded out more the dog yelped running to them reared up and paw and pawed them pawed them Dropping on all fours, again reared up at them with mute, bearish fawning. Unheeded, he kept by them as they came towards the drier sand. 
a rag of wolf's tongue. Uh, visualize the dog's tongue sticking out. A rag <laughs> of wolf's tongue. Red panting from his jaws. Now, this is what made Joyce a genius. You know, the way, just the way that line there. A rag of wolf's tongue, red panting from his jaws. Um, it's, be, it's very clear imagery there, you know. His speckled body his speckled body ambled ahead of them and then loped off at a calf's gallop. Imagine a calf. A calf sometimes, you know, a calf when he gallops off, it's kind of, sh kind of, he does it in a slow way, like, so now it's like, his speckled body ambled ahead of them and then loped off. And that would remind me of the dog would uh, kind of run away, run, run off, loped. That's a very common saying there, loped. The carcass lay on his pet. Remember the dog, the 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 uh, rotten dog uh, that was washed up from the water. The carcass lay on his pet. Now he's a dog. He stopped. He stopped and he sniffed the the dead dog. Stalked round it. Visualize that. Brother, is it my brother? <laughs> it's another dog. Brother, nosing closer. He the dog nosed closer to the dead dog. Went round it. He went around the do dead dog, sniffing, sniffing it. Sniffing rapidly like a dog all over the dead dog's bedaggled fell. Dog skull. Uh, that's the dead dog. Dog sniffs. Dog sniff. Eyes on the ground. So the dead dog's eyes were on the ground. Moves to one great goal. A eh, poor dog's body. Now we, we, we encountered this word before in this book. A eh, poor dog's body. A eh, poor fellow. It means in this context. A eh, poor dog's body. You know. Jai's called a dog's body. He's a dog. Here lies poor dog's body's body <laughs> Jace. here lies poor dog's body's body which is the dead dog uh, definitely Jace was laughing when he wrote that line next line tatters out of that jamanga now the owner now we know the dog's name is tatters that's his name because the owner shouted him tatters out of that get away from that out of that you mongrel so the dog's name is tatters the cry brought him skulking back to his master and a blunt, bootless kick sent him unskated across a spit of sand, crouched in flight. He slunk back in a curve, doesn't see me, along by the edge of the mole he lolloped. Dulled, spelt a rock and from under a cocked hind leg, pissed against it. <laughs> he trotted forward and lifting his hind leg, pissed quick, short at an unsmelt rock, the simple pleasures of the poor, his hind, his hind paws then scattered sand, then his four paws dabbled and dwelled. Something he buried there, his grandmother, he rooted in the sand, dabbling, dwelling, uh, dabbling, and stopped to listen to the ear, scraped up the sand again with a furry of his claws, soon ceasing, a parrot, a panther, got in spouse breach, vulturing the dead. Uh, it's just brilliant writing from Jace. Right, tatters out of that moment. The cry brought him skulking back to his master. The dog goes back to his owner. And he got a kick from the... <laughs> the owner gave him a kick. And a blunt bootless kick sent him. <laughs> so the owner gave him a kick. <laughs> uh, this is just Jace uh, again. again. Uh, so when the dog went back to the owner, the owner gave him a kick. And a blunt, bootless kick sent him unscathed across this bit of sand. Crouched in flight. He crouched in flight after getting the kick. He slung back in a curve. Doesn't see me. Now, Stephen is asking me. The dog, he doesn't see me. Along by the edge of the mole, he lolloped. The dog. Dawdled. Now, the dog, he smelt a rock. He, he, the dog smelt a rock. And from under a cocked hind leg, pissed <laughs> the dog pissed against the rock. Uh, I'm sure J J Jace was really laughing. Um, right in that, he trotted forward because at that time, as I said before, he was shackled Jace a bit when he wrote uh, Portrait of an Artist of the Young Man and the Dubliner. He was shackled a bit by what he could say because censorship and so on. He not in Ulysses. Um, he went. He said what he wanted to say, and but he. Jai's, you know, put in more, you know, he put in like words like that as well. <laughs> and it could be even more. Jai's was more or less saying, you know, you know, I, you know, you're not going to stop. <laughs> I will, I will write what I want. Um, 
and really that's the thing about writing there is no rules to writing um now towards the end of this book i think there's 30 pages or possibly 40 pages they continue on um and there is no full stop or there's no comma it's just a continuous sentence and um uh, Joyce, so he's about 30 or 40 pages in this book where there's no full stop and there's no, cent and no comma at all. So Joyce made up his own, he invented his own, um, his own rules for writing and he wasn't going to be shackled by anybody and you know you have to admire that. Um, you have to you have to admire somebody that sees things in a different way you know and not you know he didn't have robotic thinking, you know, that um, doing things the same way over and over again, you know, and you have to admire Joyce for that as well. Um, so I'm going off on a bit of a tangent there, but uh, let me go back to the book again. Uh, okay, uh, he slung back in a curve, doesn't see me, along by the edge of the mole, dog. smelt to rock and so on. <laughs> okay, quick short at a... He turned forward and lifting his hind leg, pissed quick, short at his uns unsmelt rock. Uh, the simple pleasures of the poor. Now that's uh, the simple pleasure. What is the simple pleasure of the poor? The poor, they really have no pleasure. But one of the pleasures poor people have would be having a good pee. So that's what Jace is saying there. The one pleasure poor people have is would be having a good pee. That's the simple pleasure of the poor. That's what Jace is saying. Now his hind paws scattered sand, you know, he's, he's, uh, then his four paws dabbled and dwelled. So I visualize the dog digging in the sand, you know, dabbled and dwelled. Jice paints the complete picture here. Something he buried there. Now Stephen Lass is thinking, something, he, what did this dog bury there? Was it his grandmother he buried? He rooted in the sand, dabbling, uh, dwelling, and stopped. The dog stopped to listen to the air. That's that's what a dog would do. He'd stop and he'd listen to the air. Scraped up the sand again with a furry with a furry furry of his claws. Now that's what a dog would do, he'd like he go crazy like for the furry of his claws. Soon ceasing soon ceasing he stopped. A paired, a panther, got in spouse breach, vulturing the dead. Uh, I don't know what that means to be honest. Oh no, you see, right here now you see Stephen Ellis could be gonna he's he's thinking could be gone in a different direction. You see, and it seems that way too. Soon ceasing a pair a panther. So we're back to he could be back thinking about the panther, Stephen Haynes dreaming of the panther. A panther got in spouse breach, vulturing the dead. I don't know what which vulturing the dead means there. After he woke me last night, here we are. Uh, yes, this is quite correct. Now he's yes, he started to think about about this hands again. After because he woke me up last night when he was having the nightmare about the panther. After he woke me up last night, same dream, or was it? Wait, open hallway, street of harlots, remember. Um Harrowan at El rested. I am almost I'm almost in it. That man led me, spoke, I was not afraid. The melon he had the melon he had he held against my face, smiled, cream cream fruit smell that was the rule said income red carper spread you will see who now Stephen does to start thinking again after he woke me after his hands woke me last night same dream or was it now Stephen does thinking uh was it after he woke me last night same dream or was it now he's thinking about was, was i having the same dream as uh as the night before or not and then he said, no, wait, no, what dream, what was I dreaming about? Wait, he says, open hallway. And then he's thinking, no, I was dreaming about an open hallway, street of harlots. This is the dream is heaven. Remember, harlot at Ratchet. I don't know what that means. I am all musting it. And then he's thinking, in his, this other dream he had, that man led me. Some man led me, spoke. I, I was not afraid. The melon he had, he held against my face. So this in this dream, this man held this melon against his face. Smiled, cream fruit smell, great image in your eyes. That was the rule. Said in, so in the stream, the man said, "In come red carper." So there's a red carper inside. You will see who. Now next line. Shouldering their bags, they trudged the red Egyptians. His blued feet out of torn up trousers, slept, 
the clammy sand. A dull brick muffler strangling his unshaven neck, with woman's steps she follows the ruffian and his strolling mort. Spires slung at her back, loose sand and shell grit crushed her bare feet. About her wind raw face her hair trailed, behind her lord her health net. Uh, bring a wast to Ramvel. When night hides her body's flaws, calling under her calling under her brown shawl from an archway where dogs have mired her fancy man is treating two royal dubliners in O'Loughlin's at black pits buzzer wep in rogues rum lingo for o my dimpler wrapping dell a she friend's whiteness under her rancid rags rags from belly's lane that night the tanker smells <coughs> um Excuse me now, just um, now you see, it's no wonder um, <laughs> people say Ulysses is confusing because um, now let me just read that again. That man led me. So, in this dream, this man led this, this is the dream he had the night before as well. So, this man sh held a melon to against his face, smile, cream food smell. That was the rule. In camp, red capper spread. You will see who now. He comes out with his thoughts again, shouldering the bags. This is the man and the woman that were that were picking the uh, picking the uh, cockle shells. Now, you know, he's come out. He stopped thinking, and he sees them in the distance. He sees the man and the woman coming out with two bags of shells from out the sea, shouldering their bags. They're trudged, so they're shouldered. They have two bags uh, slung over their shoulders, obviously, and they look like two red Egyptians. That's what he's thinking. His blued feet, that's the man's blued feet from being in the water. His blued feet out of torn up trousers, his trousers turned up, slapping the clammy sand. Right? They're, they're, they're on the sand. A dull brick muffler strangling his unshaven neck. A dull brick muffler strangling his unshaven neck. I don't know what he means there by a dull brick muffler. So something slung over his, his uh, neck, probably. With woman's steps, she followed the ruffian. Now, the woman is following this man, and he's referred to him as a ruffian, and our strolling Mart. Mart? Is Mart a dog? Uh, I'll have to look that word up, but I think Mart is nice. I, it could be the dog uh, following them. I'll have to check that out. Spiles slung at her back. Spiles, the shells they have slung at her, be at her back. Loose sand and shell grit crushed her bare feet. Uh, the woman walked away, and this is what's under her feet. About her wind raw face, wind raw face, that's great image from Joyce. Her hair trailed, wind raw. The wind, uh, you know, has kind of reddened her face. Behind her lord, her helpmate. Behind her lord, was the, the, our man in front of her, her helpmate. Being awash to Ramvilla, uh, to do. When night. And now he's thinking, when night hides her body's flaws, call, calling under her brown shawl from an archway where dogs have mired. If I was to hazard a guess here now, I'd say this woman could possibly be uh, a lady of the night, a uh, prostitute, possibly. When night hides her body's flaws, um, call, calling under her brown shawl from an archway where dogs have mired. And she's waiting there for customers and so on and so forth, it seems like. Her fancy man and now and this woman they were picking the shells could be like a lady of the night as they say and that could be her kind of a boyfriend or something. Uh her fancy man is treating two Royal Dubliners two uh customers possibly at Black Pits, if it could be a pub in O'Loughlin's of Black Pits or yeah, or, uh, the pub probably. Both are Wep in rogues rum lingo. Um oh my dimpler wrapping dell a she friend's whiteness under her rancid racks Fumbley's lane that night. Now he could be thinking about Fumbley's lane, he could have possibly went there himself. The tanker smells. White the fumbles, red the gun and the crown's dainty is couch um uh, hoghead with me then in the dark dark mouth clip and kiss um 
Now I I actually going to leave that now because now actually we're up to um uh let's take the time oh shoot. Uh the time uh now we've completed actually page 41 and I was in the second installment I was just going to go to page 40. Um and that will complete the second installment but I see here now we've one two uh three I have three pages here and a few lines and that would bring me up to page 45 in in the book uh, that I'm holding you know other people's books it could be more or less whatever now I would like to continue this on to page 45 for the simple reason then we come up to uh inter Leopold Bloom and it will finish out that whole chapter and then the, the next chapter uh, starting out uh the third installment will be Mr. P Leopold Bloom. It will relish the inner organs of beasts and fowls. That will that will take that will start off the uh, third installment. But I want to stop right here now because that that took an hour and a half. Uh, now we we're going up we're going five pages uh, past. Um, uh, or the goal was like to second installment of forty pages. So I'm going to stop right here now and. The last kind of section of this second installment will take in one, two, three, three and a quarter pages. And then I'll just do a little summary. And um, as they say, until then, and I'm looking out the window here now, and I see the lights are on in my home village of Monavé. The lights are on in Kelly's. And the pub called The Woodside. And also, uh, looking up here, I see the lights are on in McGann's pub and also in Morden's pub. And I might just go over for one or two beers and um, until next time.